Welcome back to NCRT class 10th chapter number 13 Magnetic Effects of Electric Current. Children, in the previous class, we learned about how an electric current can be produced by moving a magnet, isn't it? Or um, how a moving coil can produce an induced current. We have studied in the topic called electromagnetic induction. So children, with that previous knowledge, in today's class, we are going to study about electric generator means what here. Isn't it children? We have studied earlier to this that children, electric motor is a device which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Means when we supply a current to the circuit, it has converted into mechanical energy we have shown in the electric motor. But in this chapter, that is topic, we are studying the reverse case children. That is, a mechanical energy can produce what here? Electric current. Isn't it children? So, what is electric generator? Electric generator is nothing but a children. It is a machine which will produce what? Current. We can say, isn't it children? It's a machine. It will produce What children? Current. And it converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. The main important thing is children what? Here it converts. It converts mechanical energy. Into electrical energy children here understanding it, this electrical generator it is converting mechanical energy into electrical energy this mechanical means it might be in the rotation form isn't it children rotation of the coil this is what here mechanical type isn't it so this rotation of the conductor get converted into current. Understand children? It means that here in the electric generator by moving a coil we are producing an induced current children. This is nothing but electromagnetic induction. So we can say that children electric generator mainly works on the principle called electromagnetic induction electromagnetic induction this we have already studied isn't it children what it says children that is a moving coil will produce an induced current in the conductor here also see here we are rotating the coil an electric current is going to produce isn't it so the uh, main principle called electromagnetic induction depending upon that that is electric generator uses this principle so children in worm mark if uh, asked on what principle electric generator works means you have to write it mainly works on the principle called electromagnetic induction and here it says that a moving coil will produce an induced current in the conductor when it is placed in a magnetic field. That is what children you can write here that is a moving or you can take it as a rotating here rotating coil produces induced current induced current in the conductor when it is placed in magnetic field in magnetic field so this generator is uh, what mainly works on you know, electromagnetic induction and sometimes children we call the generator as a dynamo the one more name is what children dynamo generally for small devices or generator we call it as a dynamo here so 
the electric generators are of two types children isn't it children that is one uh, electric better you take it completely electric generators of two types isn't it children what are those that is alternating current generator here you can write complete meaning children that is alternating current generator the one more is dc generator nothing but a direct current isn't it children so ac that is alternating current generator is abbreviated in short it as a ac generator and direct current is abbreviated as in short form that is what dc generator or dc current isn't it children so in now we will study about one by one detail that is uh, in exams they might ask explain about a ac dynamo or a generator means you have to write the next one isn't it children similarly suppose they might ask explain the construction working of a dc dynamo means you have to write that isn't it children so whenever they have asked dynamo means you have to keep it in mind that it belongs to generator got it children okay now we will see first with a ac generator means alternating current generator children now we will discuss about how an electric generator works and how it is constructed and what principle it works first let us start with the principle an electric generator as i told it mainly works on the principle of a emi that is electromagnetic induction it mainly works on electromagnetic induction that is when a coil is rotated an induced current is produced in the current uh, conductor when it is placed in a magnetic field isn't it children upon this principle an electric generator works that is coil rotates in a magnetic field and induced current set ups in the conductor in the conductor what is that this is what on this principle electric generator works then how it construction will be made children in general an electric generator looks like as shown in this figure isn't it children it consists of a two magnets powerful permanent magnets they'll use and even a soft iron core also they can use children okay do, now forget about that here they have used two powerful magnets permanent magnets and a rectangular coil as i told earlier if a straight conductor if it is bent in the form of a ab there is sorry in the form of a rectangular shape then it is called as a rectangular coil now here and it consists of an a rod like structure which is called as a axle and here two separate rings are used children in case of an a generator two separate Job, rings they have used and these rings are commonly called as a slip rings children slip rings children the difference between these rings and electric motor rings is here complete one complete rings are there here isn't it whereas in case of electric motor half ring it was that is a complete one circle has splitted in case of a uh motor isn't it the rings which are used in case of electric motor were like this 
बट हियर वी आर यूजिंग कंप्लीट सर्कल शेप्ड रिंग्स इज़न्ट इट दीज रिंग्स टू सेपरेट रिंग्स और वाइडली यूज इन केस ऑफ अ इलेक्ट्रिक जनरेटर एंड यू हैव टू नोटिस दैट इन केस ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रिक मोटर वी हैव कनेक्टेड द कॉइल टू द सोर्स मीन्स फॉर द बैटरी बट हियर वी आर कनेक्टेड द कॉइल टू द गैल्वनोमीटर सो children now we will see step by step how it is constructed this is what brief now clearly we will now discuss when a coil called abcd is placed in a magnetic field means when a rectangular coil is placed between the two poles of a magnetic field then the two ends this is one end and this side is what and the end the two ends of the coil are connected to two separate slip rings and those are named as a ring r1 and r2 here internally means the inner side of these rings are insulated means no current will flows inside the rings isn't it children and similarly upon these rings two separate brushes carbon brushes are used Isn't it? Those are named as a B1 and B2. Means here the coil has just pressed upon these brushes, and from these brushes it has connected to what galvanometer. Isn't it, children? What is this? This is what galvanometer. So how the coil has connected to the galvanometer, children? the one end of the coil is connected to the ring 1 upon its a brush one will be there and from the brush one it has connected to the galvanometer and other side here the other end of the coil has connected to the ring 2 and upon the ring 2 one more brush called b2 will be there and from the b2 brush it has connected to other side of the galvanometer this is what a simple construction children see you might have asked whether these two rings are acting like a commutator of course no children definitely in case of a ac we won't use what uh, commutators isn't it this we will discuss clearly next children okay now got understand children how it has constructed a rectangular coil is placed between the two poles of a permanent magnet in such a way that the two ends of the coil are get connected to the two separate rings named as a r1 and r2 and uh, here the brushes are externally connected to the galvanometer so we have stated that here the coil has to be rotated in order to produce a induced current in the coil so how can this be achieved children so this axle may be connected to a shaft children means a rotating device will be uh, present children using that shaft the axle is rotated understanding children we have to make a mechanical work isn't it so how it is possible we have to rotate means something holder we had to use there so that was uh, the role of a shaft here means shaft means it is helpful in rotating the axle so that in a sign what happens the coil is rotating in the magnetic field when you are rotating the axle from outside means immediately what happens the coil will starts rotating inside which has placed in the magnetic field got it children this is what a construction it consists of a rectangular coil which is named as a abcd and it has consisted of a two slip rings which are named as the r19 r2 and two conducting brushes which are stationary one isn't it two brushes b19 b2 or used and an axle is rotated outside 
in such a way that the coil will start rotating in the magnetic field. This is what a construction of an electric generator. So children, now we will see how it works. An electric generator works mainly due to that is uh, electromagnetic induction. So here we have to achieve the rotation of the coil from outwards. So what we have to do? We have to rotate the axle with the help of a shaft. So when you start rotating the axle which has connected to the two slip rings, isn't it children? So what happens? The rectangular coil starts rotating in the clockwise direction initially, isn't it children? So when you are rotating the coil in clockwise direction, that is A, B, C, D, isn't it children? When the coil starts rotating in the clockwise direction, the arm AB, isn't it children? Here, the arm AB upon it, force has created, isn't it? Because of that reason, what happened? Upon the arm AB, due to the force, it is moving what? Upward direction. And this arm, means another arm is moving downwards. Means the CD arms goes downwards. That is, when the coil is rotating in the clockwise direction, the arm AB moves up. Isn't it children? So, the direction we can represent here. And similarly, what happens? The CD arm, that is exactly opposite to the arm AB. It moves downwards. Isn't it children? It moves downwards. So, we want to know here in which direction an induced current has generated. Because of that reason, we have connected a device called galvanometer. What it will do? Its main function is to check or measure the presence of an induced current in the circuit. So, what happens? When the coil st starts rotating in the magnetic field, it will show some deflection. This deflection is nothing but a due to presence of an induced current. Understanding children. So, here we want to know in which direction the induced current has generated. At that time, what we have to use? Fleming's right hand rule. Isn't it children? Now, what we have to use? Fleming's right hand rule. So, children. When the coil is rotating anti-clockwise direction, that is A, B, C, D direction, we have to apply Fleming's right hand rule. Recall children what it says, thumb is pointing the direction of a force or motion of a conductor, whereas the index is pointing direction of a magnetic field and the middle finger is pointing direction of an induced current. So here the arm A, B is moving up. So Place your thumb finger upward direction and the magnetic field or in this direction means it is perpendicular to the force, isn't it children? So keep your index finger in this way. So the induced current is going children upward direction, isn't it children? Now it looks what something go like this. This is what the direction of a induced current. Isn't it children? And similarly, now apply Fleming's right hand rule for the arm CD. Here, the uh, motion of the conductor is downwards. CD e arm is moving downwards. Isn't it? See here, CD is going downwards. Means the motion of the conductor is downwards and the magnetic field is upwards and the induced current is what? That is downwards. So, what happened here? Along the arm AB and CD, an induced current has set up in the direction AB, CD and it flows from the brush B2 to B1 externally. Means here, after applying right, Fleming's right hand rule, we came to know that the current, induced current, induced 
करेंट फ्लोस एक्सटर्नली फ्रॉम ब्रश B2 to B1, isn't it, children? So what happened here when the coil is rotating clockwise direction? Here induced current has set up, and this induced current is uh, taking a path from brush B2 to B1 direction. Means from brush B2 to it is going back to B1, and let us see what happens after half rotation isn't it jillian this is what up to here what half rotation at the time the induced current is moving in this way in this direction isn't it children so now we will see after half rotation how the coil will move exactly reverse children isn't it initially the coil is moving a b c d when the uh, coil is in the clockwise direction AB arm is moving up, but after half rotation, the CD arm comes up, children. Here, isn't it? Because that is half to half rotation. For every half rotation, this will happen, children. That is CD moves up. Which initially it has moved downwards. Now it is moving upward direction, and the arm AB is moving. That is down because of this reason. An induced current has set up here from the direction B1 to B2, isn't it, children? That is an external current now flows from B1 to B2. Isn't it, children? You can apply once again Fleming's right hand rule, children. When the coil is moving upwards, means you have to represent that is thumb. You have to point out the thumb finger upward direction. Isn't it? And the magnetic field is perpendicular. So, induced current is moving up. Isn't it? The initial it was moved in this direction. Now it is moving in this way. And similarly, when the coil AB is moving initially up, now it moves what? Downwards. So from here to an electric current is generated. Means from brush B1 to B2, a net induced current will flows in the direction DCBA. Isn't it, children? In the direction DCBA. A. When the coil starts rotating in the direction DC BA, that is you can even call it as a anti-clockwise, what happens? The current starts flowing from B1 to B2. It means that here for every half rotation, the induced current is changing its direction. Isn't it children? And such a current, if it changes its direction for regular interval of a time is called AC current. Isn't it children? Whatever the current it has produced, it is changing its direction. So we call it as a AC current. Means here, due to the rotation of the coil, here the electric current is changing its direction. Isn't it children? So the name of this current or this induced current, we call it as a alternating current. And this uh, device which uses AC type of a current is called as a AC generator. Got it children? Okay, once again I will explain. Look at children, when the coil is rotating in the direction ABCD, the arm AB is moving upwards and the arm CD is moving downwards. So what happened here? The current starts flowing B2 to B1. And after half rotation, this uh, DCBA in this direction, the current starts flowing from B1 to B2. Because of this reversal of a direction of a current, an induced current is set up and it changes for every half a rotation its direction and hence we call it as a alternating current because here the direction is changing for every half rotation 
isn't it? Initially, the current has produced in this way. Now, it is exactly opposite, isn't it? So, uh, if a current changes its direction at regular intervals of time is called alternating current. This is what working of an AC generator even you can say, isn't it children? So children, now with this concept, we will learn in the next class DC generator means what and how it is constructed and what is the difference between AC uh, generator and a DC generator we will see.